In this video, we're gonna walk through the system called Grandpa on Hack the Box to help you level up your ethical hacking skills. Also remember that this video is for educational purposes to help improve cybersecurity and not for malicious intent. Before we get into the video, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements, resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. Also, if you're trying to break into cybersecurity, check out my Getting Started page for free resources and a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so this box is a little bit more challenging. And basically what's gonna happen is we will run an exploit, get into the box, find out that we are not a privileged or system level account. And then we'll have to do some privilege escalation in order to get that system level access. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run a nmap scan against the target. And once we get back our results, we can go ahead and analyze those. In this scan, the dash A does a lot of our enumeration. So it's gonna grab the services and things like that. And then this T4 is the speed at which it's going to scan. Now you can go lower numbers and that will go a lot slower or you can go up to five and it will actually go really fast, but you might miss some stuff. So now that we have our results back, we can see that the only port open is 80. Okay, so HTTP. If we look at the title of the page that comes back, it says under construction. So most likely this is gonna be a default kind of page or something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first go to the website and we're gonna take a look and see what is going on on the web page. And sure enough, it's an under construction web page. It's some kind of default page that doesn't have anything very useful to us. So we're going to go back here and we're actually going to open up a new tab and we're going to run Durbuster against the, uh, the victim in order to search the web server for any useful files. Now, anytime that you see a web server up, this is a good idea to do. And you want to do it immediately just because this can take a while. So you just get it going in the background. We'll type in the URL and port 80 because HTTP. We will do go faster using more threads, so it's gonna go a lot faster. As far as the word list, we'll go over here back to the command line, and the one that I like to use is this one. It is this medium one right here. Okay, so we will go ahead and copy that list and we'll go back to our Durbuster instance and paste that location in there. Now, remember, this is an IIS uh, Windows system that's running the web server. So we're not likely to see PHP on there as far as file types or file extensions, but we will see ASP, ASPX, and we also want to look for text files. Now, with text files, sometimes there can be juicy information, things like login credentials or any kind of hints, things like that. So you always wanna make sure to search for that as well and not miss those. Now on this box, because we only have port 80 open, we're not actually gonna most likely find login credentials directly to that box. If there was like a, a login page or something like that, then we could get to that. Or otherwise, if there was like an SSH service open, then that would be useful. But again, if we find credentials, then most likely we would have to connect to the box first, and then it would be to change users or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the scan in the background. And we're gonna go back to our results here. Now, again, we're running Microsoft IIS version 6.0. Now 6.0 is an older version, so there's more than likely a vulnerability out there or an exploit out there. 
So we're going to go to Google and use some of our Google foo here. And we're going to search for an exploit for that version of IIS. Now, something that I noticed when I was going through this box originally was that a lot of the exploits are not very well documented. Surprise, surprise. And so like this one, there's not really anything that explains if you need to change stuff or, you know, what if you need to change the shell code or anything like that. And I tried a few of them and they basically, you know, didn't work. They would spit out a bunch of uh, assembly characters or, you know, characters like that. And it, it just wouldn't return a shell. So that's pretty, you know, pretty useless. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use this one right here, this Rapid7, which is Metasploit. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And you can see that it is for the web dev service for IIS 6.0, Windows Server 2003 R2. So we'll go down here and we'll go ahead and copy the module. And now we're gonna go ahead and launch Metasploit. So we'll go ahead and give this a few seconds for it to load up and then we'll select the, the module that we're gonna run against the victim. All right, so now we'll go ahead and paste that line in there. So now we've loaded up the module. We're gonna go ahead and look at the options. As you can see here, the only thing that has to be configured is the R hosts because everything else that is required is already filled in. So of course, if we need to change things, then we could do that. But the only required thing right now that we need to put in is the R host. Now, you can see that this is R hosts with an S. If this was just R host, it would only accept one IP address or one target. Because it's R hosts, you can see that you can put in multiple, you can put in CIDR notation, or you can even provide it with a file that contains different targets. So we are just gonna configure it for the single, single victim. So set our hosts, and then we'll put in the IP address of the victim. Okay, and then it's a good idea to go back to show options because one thing that I've noticed, and you know a lot of people will notice, if you type this variable wrong, say you put our host instead of our hosts, then it is not going to set this value. So once you do it, you always wanna go back to the show options and just double check and make sure so you're not launching a blank exploit. And then we will look at the target options. And the only option is that server 2003 R2. And that's fine because that is actually what we want. So now because we're one of the cool kids, we're gonna go ahead and type exploit and we're going to launch the exploit against the victim and get our shell. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. And as you can see, it looks like our interpreter shell is being returned. So that looks like a win right there. And we're gonna start getting a bunch of errors apparently for Durbuster. So we'll go ahead and stop that because that scan is actually not going to be useful to us anymore. All right, and there is our interpreter shell. So we can go ahead and list out some files. And so we also want to go into an actual shell and I'm just gonna type who am I because I wanna know what user account that we're accessing or what service we're accessing. So we're under the network service account right now, okay? So the network service account is not a system level account. So that actually means that we need to do privilege escalation, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna background this, this session for uh, our victim. And Metasploit has an exploit suggester that we're going to use. So basically what happens is uh, Metasploit will go through all of its known exploits and it's going to basically check the victim 
to see if they are potentially vulnerable. So we'll load up that module. We'll look at show options and we need to specify the session here. Okay, so we're gonna type sessions and we can see that it is session number one. Okay, so ID number one. So we're gonna do set session and we're gonna do one. And then we're gonna do show options again. So remember it was sessions to see the sessions and then set session to actually set the session for the, the exploit checker. Okay, so now we're gonna type run and that's going to go ahead and start testing a whole bunch of exploits that potentially the victim will be vulnerable to. All right, and as you can see, we're starting to get some results back as far as what some potential exploits can be. Now, when you see this, you wanna look through them and you'll also see that, like on this one, the service is running but it can't be validated. The target appears to be vulnerable. So that can help you prioritize which ones you check. Obviously, you wanna go through you know, a whole bunch of them until you find one that works, but that can help you as far as prioritizing the different exploits. So I'm not gonna go through all of these ones because I already know which one works, and it's this one right here. But of course, if this was a real life scenario, you would want to test all of them until you get one that works. So we are going to load up that module. Okay, and then we're gonna look at the show options. And now again, it wants us to select the session. So we'll just do sessions again, just so we make sure we get it right. And again, it's set session to number one, session one. And now we are going to go ahead and type exploit and try to privilege escalate our way to a system shell. Now you can see that this failed. One thing with this particular one is that we actually need to migrate the process that we are on in order to run this exploit successfully. So what we're going to do is we're going to type session and then one. And it's actually sessions and then one because we're going to go into our session and we're gonna type PS for processes. So this is gonna list out all of our different processes that we need. And like I said, we need to change to another process in order to successfully run this. So the one that we're gonna choose is this one right here, this GAV C data, okay? We're gonna take this PID, this process ID, and we're gonna type migrate 2740 because that's that process ID. Okay. So right now it was on 1392, so it was on this one. And there was no uh, no user that was owning that process. And the one we switched to, network service owns that process. So we have a successful completion. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to background our interpreter session again. And we're going to look at the options here. And sometimes on this particular one, especially, you might have to set your L host to your local IP address or whichever IP address is connected. So you can see here that it changed it to my my local system IP address, and that's not the one that I actually need. The one that I actually wanna do is this IP address. And you can also specify an interface. So just make sure that you get the right IP address in there. And again, just like always, we'll go ahead and do show options just to make sure everything is set correctly. Session one, uh, we're gonna exit the thread if it fails or if we exit. This one is a little bit more advanced topic, but basically what happens is, if we exit the thread, it's not gonna kill off the process. If you have it set to the process, then what's gonna happen is when you exit, it's going to kill that process and you won't be able to connect to it or anybody else won't be able to connect to it until that process is restarted. So thread's always a good idea to have that set. 
So everything looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead and type exploit. And as you can see, it looks like that we have a win and our exploitation was successful. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a shell and we're gonna do that same who am I command. And you can already see that we're in the system 32 windows folder. So more than likely, we definitely have system level access. And sure enough, NT authority system level access. So this box had a few more advanced type of tactics and good lessons, especially with the process migration. That's not something that you always have to do, but definitely if you have an exploit that fails and you try it several times, it's not a bad idea to look into that and migrate to more of a stable process. Question of the day, how difficult did you find this system? Did you try to defeat it before you watch this video? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through how to defeat the system called Grandpa and hack the box. Remember, you should only be doing ethical hacking on systems that you're given permission to do so. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements. If you want resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services, and I'll see you next time.